Trade Trade Guitars is giving away this Gibson Custom Shop Les Paul to one of you. How to enter? Subscribe to Playing Trade Guitars on YouTube and we'll give it away when we hit 50,000 subscribers. Hey, welcome back to Play and Trade Guitars. I'm John, that's Zach behind the camera, and this is Play and Trade Guitars, where we play it and trade it. We're continuing our suite of videos on the best-selling and new Les Pauls from both Gibson and Epiphone. Today, we're taking a look at the Epiphone Les Paul Studio, $499. We'll talk about the pros and cons, we'll put it on the bench and talk specs, and then of course we'll plug it in and play it. Check out the accompanying video for the Gibson Les Paul Studio. At the end of that video, we give you five reasons to buy the Gibson Les Paul Studio over the Epiphone. But in this video, stay tuned because I'm going to give you five reasons to buy the Epiphone Les Paul Studio over the Gibson. If you're in the market for a new guitar, check out our Zounds link in the description and make sure you're in it to win it with our Gleam giveaway. We're giving away a Gibson Custom Shop R7 Les Paul. I've got it out of the box. It does not come with a gig bag or anything, so you're pulling it straight out. And uh, setup out of the box is really nice. I don't see any structural flaws or quality control issues. These are made in China. This is a beautiful alpine white finish. We've got a mahogany body, mahogany neck, uh, more of a slim neck. Uh, it's actually not as slim as the Gibson, which is kind of interesting. And we'll talk about all those specs when we put it on the bench. But beautiful alpine white. Something to note, you actually can only get the alpine white from Epiphone. Gibson is not currently making alpine white Les Paul Studios. So if that is your jam, this is the way to go. Let's give Epiphone its shake on the bench and let it rip. I'm really excited. This is a beautiful guitar. Let's head over the bench. Got this open book Epiphone inspired by Gibson headstock. Powell Ferro fretboard. Nice dark piece of wood here. Um, for Powell Ferro standards, I'd say it's actually uh, it fooled me. I thought it was rosewood when it came out of the box. It's got the trapezoid inlays, 22 frets, and then a mahogany body, mahogany neck. Uh, we've got these Epiphone uh, designed by Epiphone USA pickups, which we'll pull out and take a look at. And then the speed knobs on the volume knobs, we actually have the push-pull coil split, which is really cool for kind of getting a humbucker versus single coil uh, kind of a sound out of your humbuckers. It's $499. It's pretty hard to beat a Les Paul for $499. We'll see if this holds up uh, to the scrutiny. Nut measures in about 1.67, a little more narrow actually than the Gibson. First fret 0 0.83, 12th fret 0 0.95. So interesting, the Epiphone neck is actually just a tad thicker uh, than the Gibson neck, so that's something to keep in mind. And then the body measures in at 1.91 inches, so it's actually a tenth of an inch thicker than the Gibson. The body itself is gonna be finished in poly versus nitro on the Gibson, which is fine, it's more durable, it holds up over time, it's not gonna age and breathe like nitro, but each uh, manufacturer uses poly or nitro depending on what people are looking for. Poly's great too, nothing wrong with it. Lifting out these pickups, we have stamped uh, design by Epiphone USA El Nico pickups from Epiphone. El Nico Classic, they call these. So humbuckers, but then also wired for coil split, which we'll talk about uh, with these speed knobs here and volume, which will split from humbucker to more of a single by grounding out one of the rails. We've got a bridge reading at 7.8, which splits to 3.9. Neck at 7.7, .7, coil splits to 3.9, and then a combined reading of 3.8, if you split those out, 1.9. A big difference here compared to Gibson, this is a actual coil split. So you'll read on the multimeter when I pull that, about half the resistance when we go from humbucker to, a, to grounding out one of the rails, which makes it sound more like a single coil pickup, is different than kind of what I call almost like a tone circuit or tone button that's in the Gibson. They do kind of two different things. Um, my guess before we plug it in is that this coil split on the Epiphone might actually be more functional and useful than the coil tap that you find on the Gibson. But we'll find that out when we plug and play and you can let us know what you think in the comments. Good ring of this guitar. Uh, very comfortable neck. So it's actually slightly thicker than the Gibson neck. So I prefer a thicker neck. Just even that little bit of extra thickness, I actually prefer on this guitar. It does feel heavier than the Gibson as well. This is a weight relieved body, but it's not the ultra weight relief that is on the Gibson. So let's get a weight on this guitar. Uh, exactly eight and a half pounds. So the Epiphone Les Paul Studio is eight and a half pounds. Check out our video on the Gibson. You'll see some differences. Uh, that one's actually under eight. It's about seven and a half pounds. So about a pound of extra meat in the Epiphone. Okay. So we've got some hand wired CTS pots, 500K pots. Uh, nice touch, high quality pots. 
Um, you can see the double tall pots for the coil split. A big plus I would give Epiphone in comparing the Epiphone versus Gibson Les Paul Studio is that because this is more of a hand wiring control setup versus a circuit board, this will be easier for you to modify or get at if you need to change or repair anything rather than the circuit board guitars, which are a little harder to work on. Seems like a pretty solid Les Paul all around. So I'm excited now to plug it in. We'll check out some DI clean tones and also check out that coil tapping and then we'll plug it in and play it with the track so you can hear it in context. And then make sure you go check out our Gibson Les Paul Studio because if you're in the market, use our Zounds link below. You can shop, drop any questions or comments down below. Let's plug it in and get to it. So you can definitely hear when I pull the coil split uh, via the push-pull volume, you get um, that kind of single thinner sound. It's also going to result in an acoustic phenomenon where you feel like you're losing volume. Some people um, immediately kind of actually reject that and say, you know, it just sounds like it's too weak. If you can get past that and actually think of it as more of kind of a palette of thick humbucker tones and then kind of the thinner single coil, um, you can do some cool things. So if I'm... That actually sounds pretty cool when you use the coil split switch. Same with the neck. Definitely a different sound, but useful. It gives you kind of uh, a few different textures to work with. Now let's crank it up through a Marshall JCM 800 and see how it sounds in the mix.
has been a great look at the Epiphone Les Paul Studio. Um, I'm almost tempted to call this a must-own guitar. It does everything that you'd want a Les Paul to do, and then it's even got that coil splitting, which I think is really cool. But the quality coming out of Epiphone, Zach and I have talked about this before, these guitars are fantastic, not just for a $499 guitar, for any guitar. I would absolutely give this the highest rating I could. Uh, $499 Epiphone Les Paul Studio in beautiful Alpine white. I'm going to leave you with five reasons to buy the Epiphone Les Paul Studio over the Gibson Les Paul Studio. Here's number one. Number one, the price. I just talked about it. $499. It doesn't come with a case, so you have to get a case to protect the investment. But for $499, uh, what you're able to get out of this is second to none. So price is number one, $499. Links below in the description too if you want to check it out on Zounds. Number two the hand-wired electronics. The fact that this is not a circuit board is gonna allow you to tinker with this guitar if you're into that kind of thing. If you need to repair or modify this guitar, it's gonna be a lot easier to do so because it doesn't have a circuit board in the guitar. Number three, the weight. This is actually a tricky one because you might be the kind of person who wants the ultra weight relief of the Gibson, which is like seven and a half pounds. This guitar has an extra pound of meat on it. It's about eight and a half pounds. And to me, I just like the way it sits in my hand. It also is worth noting that the neck on this one is slightly thicker than the Gibson. So if you like that slim feel, but you don't want that ultra slim taper feel with the seven and a half pound Les Paul, which can, which can feel kind of funny, I would actually recommend the overall feel and weight of the Epiphone over the Gibson. Number four, the coil split opposed to the coil tap on the Gibson. The coil split is a lot more intuitive in terms of sounding like what you would expect it to sound like. So if I split the coils, it really is more of an approximation of, in my mind when I play of humbucker versus pull the switch and now I'm single coil. It feels a lot more like that rather than the kind of nebulous coil tap that I'm not quite sure what's going on when I flip that on the Gibson. So that's number four. Uh, number five, I'd have to say, is this beautiful Alpine white finish. Now, in the past, Gibson made Les Paul Studios in Alpine white finish, but currently they're not. So this, uh, this finish is a knockout, and I'd round out my list of reasons to own this guitar uh, if it's not enough already by saying that the Alpine white just looks absolutely fantastic. Couldn't find a blemish or a flaw on this guitar anywhere, and you'd be hard-pressed to spend $499 on anything else elsewhere where you're gonna get this kind of uh, return and quality out of it. So thanks for checking out the Epiphone Les Paul Studio. Check out our video on the Gibson Les Paul Studio and our whole suite of the best-selling and brand new Les Pauls. We partnered with Zounds to bring those to you. And if there's a guitar that you wanna see next, let us know because we can make that happen. We wanna arm you with the information you need to buy all those new guitars that you got your heart set on. For Playing Trade Guitars, I'm John, that's Zach behind the camera. Thanks for watching, we'll see you guys in the next video. Stay real and thank you again. <laughs>